thank you very much for this opportunity to speak here. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much for all the translators, um, because we've been able to hear so many different stories from different languages. And uh, that's just amazing how this is being done. Thank you. Um, my name is Peter Moorman. I will be talking about to you about partnerships, public-private partnerships between vocational schools and small and medium-sized businesses, but also about universities of applied science and small and medium-sized businesses. Together, they are busy uh, revolutionizing vocational education. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our experiences in the Netherlands uh, and how important they are and how we are able to catapult them into existence how we are able to make them durable for a longer time, and how we're able to upscale them from small to bigger to biggest. Uh, because we truly need this to make a true impact on the big challenges we've heard all today. Digitalization, the energy transition, healthcare transitions, and also the inclusive society. We cannot do this alone. A vet school cannot do this alone. Companies cannot do this alone. Governments cannot do this alone. We need to find each other. And I'm going to tell a little bit of our experiences and how we are being how we do, trying to do this. Um, we co-founded, uh, Catapult was uh, uh, raised somewhere 10 years ago. I was one of the co-founders with a lot of other people. And after 10 years now, it exists of 400 partnerships. There are now 12,000 companies involved during doing this on a daily basis. We reach 120,000 students, both in initial education and tertiary ter ter education. And we reach about 8,000 students. Uh, teachers, sorry, that are, and researchers that are continuously doing this. So in 10 years' time, we've grown quite a lot. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about how this, uh, this works. These pictures are just a few of the partnerships and the themes they are involved. How are these partnerships started? They are all based in a region and based on the economic strength of this region and the challenges that are most urgent. In the EU language, is also the smart specialization strategies and those kind of uh, themes. So what they do is they focus on what is truly necessary within the region and what the small and medium-sized companies really need. Is it about digitalization? Is it about uh, uh, making the cities more green? Uh, but even what you see, is it about uh, genes development and making genes more sustainable? Is it about the energy transition or technological de developments? It's about the, what these companies in the region need to develop further and make, make them more stronger. Uh, and the main question, of course, in each of these partnerships is how to get enough well-skilled people to make these trans transitions possible. So, who invests in these partnerships? Um, there are four parties involved. It's the national government in the Netherlands who really supports these partnerships. And that's going to be crucial, as I will mention later on, because it takes time to develop these partnerships. Second, it's the regional governments because of the alignment with regional strategies. But those two parties only facilitate and make the first steps possible. The true investments come, of course, from the schools and from the companies that start small, become happy with the activities, and really invest in bigger locations, students, lifelong learning courses, etc. So there are four parties involved and they combine each other's strengths and rather than doing all separate activities, they do it in one partnership. So to make it a little bit concrete, what, what do they do? I'm going to give you three examples. Uh, there's one partnership on the civil, civil engineering and we've heard in an earlier story already in uh, Indiana about the shortages of uh, staff as well. Um, they they, one of their focus is increasing the number of STEM students. They implied a really innovative approach together with the companies, and they were able to increase the inflow of students by 20%. This is, when we heard about this result, we were quite astonished because usually the number is going down. Uh, but they managed to do this. Um, this is one of the results because working together and really imply, applying these solutions uh, works. And of course, what we're doing now is applying the solution to other partnerships as well. A second example is the lifelong learning or reskilling and upskilling. This is one example of uh, in the digitalization of make IT work. Uh, and after a couple of years of developing, because it takes time, they're now able to move a thousand people a year from sectors that have less employment into the IT sector, just to make more people available. The third example is about innovating companies. 
because as we mentioned, as we heard earlier, schools and vet schools can have a tremendous effect on innovation and implementing of smart solutions. Um, and one of example is the one of for Tech for Future that is able to uh, generate, uh, uh, that's doing a lot of work with these small, medium-sized businesses, and to get a feeling of the scale, they're able to raise 5.2 million uh, funding from companies that are so happy with the solutions, and so they're able to upscale and make even more activities possible. So combat shortages, uh, upskilling and reskilling, innovating companies with projects, and of course making their whole education better. All things that would not have been able to achieve uh, on separately. So, to have a little bit of feeling, this is a short, what is a partnership all about? Roughly now, there are 50 companies involved in each partnership. When I was here two years ago, this average was still 40. We do this impact measurement every, every two years. So, you see that the partnerships on average are growing uh, and they're be becoming more stronger. They reach about 500 to 700 students and there are 35 teachers and teachers researchers involved in, a, in an average partnership. Each partnership is unique, so these numbers uh, don't say everything, but you get a little bit of feeling of the, of the size. And each partnership, of course, starts pretty small, with about 10, 15 companies, and once you've de developed your activities, they become bigger. So we've been grow growing a little bit, even during the corona crisis as well, or perhaps especially during the uh, corona crisis, the COVID crisis, because we really need each other. So we've grown from 4,500 companies to 12,000 companies, 50,000 students to 120,000 students, and 4,000 teachers doubling to 8,000. Sounds nice, but we're far from being there. Because if you look at only one example, if you look at the numbers of students who are now involved, in 2017, it was 5%. In 2021, it was 12%. That's not enough. We need a lot more uh, to really combat the challenges. And so we aimed ourselves for 2025 to reach at least 25% of all the students and to slowly making the impact even bigger and bigger. Big challenge and one of the, uh, the initiatives on the Centers of Vocational Excellence can truly help with this as well. So, why Catapult and why can't these partnerships just develop them themselves? Catapult is a network that connects the people in these, net in these partnerships. It provides the tools and knowledge how to do this, uh, shows best practices and failures, and also helps with the really tough things. And it's a network, Catapult is, we are also calling it We Are Catapult, so it's the members in the network uh, learn from each other and help each other. Why? Because partnerships are a lot of fun. They have a lot of impact, but they're also very hard to establish. Um, it needs, there's no blueprint. I can't give you a document saying, okay, if you follow these steps, then it's going to be all right. We've got some guidelines, of course, but it, it's, it's depending on the sector, your own region, your situation. Uh, and even within a very tiny country as the Netherlands, the differences are huge. So imagine also in a European scale. You need creativity, agility, really to, to find out what these companies want, what your teachers want, what the students need, and how you align it to a regional uh, policy. You need problem-solving behavior. You find difficult problems. And it's impossible to solve these problems yourself. Um, so you need each other. And so you need a kind of like a catapult network to help each other, help each other thrive, and help each other with these solutions. Uh, but also vice versa. You probably have unique things in your own school or with your own company that you really want to share as well, that other people can learn from. And that's the entire essence of the Catapult Network. People bring in their ideas, bring in their knowledge freely, and people gain a lot from it as well. So that's the idea. Um, so and I'm going to share with you five lessons we've learned over the years on how to create these partnerships and how to, how to make them a little bit uh, easier. The first is, Focus, focus, focus. If you have a very broad theme, such as the energy transition, there's no company going to be interested. Well, at first, and they're going to talk to you, but what, what am I going to gain from this, this partnership? What specifically? What topic are they? And what are you going to do? Focus on what is truly necessary in a region, what is truly necessary for these small companies, is a really difficult thing uh, to learn. You can't do this by a questionnaire. You really have to find out what is necessary. So the focus on the sector, what are you going to do, and what challenge and what activities, 
is lesson number one. We've seen that when partnerships become too wide, they disappear. Second is shared ownership. And this is not shared ownership in the legal sense that there's going to be all difficult things. No, this is shared ownership by a philosophy. A partnership is not owned by a school or not owned by a group of companies. It's something you do together. Together you say, this is what we're going to do. You're going to do this, you're going to do this. We share the cost and we share the benefits. And this philosophy of shared ownership is perhaps the most hardest and the, but also most challenging thing, but also most rewarding thing. Because once you have this philosophy within your school, within the company, the, the results will be enormous. And we see that they, most, most partnerships are able to achieve a lot more than they thought beforehand. Third, and this is where the national governments kick in, and also regional governments, the costs come before the benefits. It takes time to develop a partnership. And companies are not going to pay for, well, we're going to just partnership up. That's not, not realistic. They're going to pay for real concrete things. So you need a little uh, startup, and you need to realize that it takes time for a partnership. And if you keep, you keep your eyes on the ball on the concrete activities, the benefits will come. But it takes a little bit of time. And that's why we encourage and challenge the governments as well to invest in these kind of things. Otherwise, this startup won't be possible. The fourth uh, very important thing to realize uh, are the speed differences uh, between companies and schools. They live in a different time frame. Uh, schools are normally thinking, OK, we have, we've got students coming in. They have to get a diploma in a couple of years. This is kind of the timing where they work with. Um, especially the smaller companies, they probably won't survive in three months later, so they need results in two months. This is something you have to deal with within a partnership. This is just realistic and you, you can deal with it, but it's one of the things you have to keep in mind, especially when you're coming from a school. Don't expect companies to jump in a partnership that takes four years before the first results are there. Really make it small and make it very concrete. And the fifth lesson we've learned, and I've mentioned this already a little bit, and it's one of the foundation reasons why Catapult is there, and there's no one-size-fits-all. We've seen it the last few days as well, also in the community of practice, which we will talk about. Everyone is different, so we really have to tweak, and you really have to see what's, what's the best for your own sector. And again, this is where Catapult helps with models, and you can inspire each other, but still at the end, you have to see what's best for your companies, for your students, and for your teachers. Nearly there. So 10 years ago, we started the catapult from a policy, and it's now become a movement in the Netherlands as well. People want to belong to this, and we really need to help each other. Every day, it's fun, and every day, it's a struggle, because you have to go further and further and further, and we need to go faster and faster and faster to keep up with the developments. Um, and that's what we try to do as well as with catapult. And as you know, the catapult is like this. It's like Titan tighten and strengthen relationships between them, aim very closely, find your focus, and then also let go, because once partnerships are durable and are able to upscale, uh, they don't need to help anymore, they can, they can exist. So that's the philosophy of cat Catapult. And we're now finally starting to make true impact on the economy, on the challenges and on the students, and we intend to do this a lot further. Which brings me to my uh, last slide, uh, we're on the move. Do you want to move with us? We're starting to also expand some activities in Europe as well, translating publications, tools, guidelines as well. We believe that partnerships are crucial. Uh, we heard from Jao before that he says, okay, these bar partnerships are necessary, but we need to do this together because we don't know exactly how it works. Um, you don't know how exactly how it works, but together we know probably just enough to really make them existing and really make an impact to the students, to employees and to companies and to help them challenge the great solutions of this time, great challenges. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, see you next time.